to say something, man. Y'all okay. in my business. Go ahead, man. Okay. What I'm saying is all the, the comments that that Robert Jane made, uh, what I gathered from it when you took us out to Jim Brown house, and then I felt like that when I went to Jim Brown house that yeah, I was going to be ooh and ah. I was getting that ooh and ah stage. But Jim Brown, the way Bum made those comments then, Jim Brown said, if you come in my house, it's just man to man. And that's all it's going to be. And you're not going to treat me any different than, you know, I'm not up here. I'm not going to be up here. Uh, you're going to treat me like a man. I'm going to treat you like a man. We're just human beings. we right here together, and that's the way it's going to be. Other than that, if, if you can't treat me like another person, then you just need to get out of my house. And that's the way, that's the way Jim made me feel, and that's the way Robert you know, said it right here then. Yeah. That's, that's, what I, that's what I got from the whole thing. Well, since you brought that up, uh, that's what I gathered from Robert Cummings. I remember asking Robert one time. Uh, I said, "If you played against Jim, uh, what would happen?" And without blinking, I said, uh, "If Jim came your way, what would happen?" He said, "He going down." Exactly. <laughs> and when I told Jim that, and uh, and he finally met you. I didn't bring it up again because I know that it would have been interesting, but we was in a, you know, a mixed company. That's not something you would do to put people on the spot like that. But that would have been an interesting conversation, an interesting collision, too. Uh, Jim, yeah. Jim Brown is one of the greatest football players that ever played the game. You know, I, I, I looked at him and watched him and kept up with him during the early 60s. Really respected him, uh, not only how he carried himself on the football field, but really how he carried himself off the football field right, right. and how he conducted himself in the locker room and uh, how he presented himself on, you know, very professional in dealing with issues, you know, that was going on at the time. You know, he was really a great role model. Uh, and, and I saw Jim punish some people. I mean, just literally just punish some great guys. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you know, uh, I have a great deal of respect for Jim. But... Uh, it, it would have been a, yeah, an interesting encounter. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, I want people, and I, I hope that I, by the time I, I publish this documentary next year, I can get some footage mm -hmm. of you. Mm -hmm. Because people that saw you play and the people who knew you, like me and Pierre the same age, we look, you know, I'm 58, he's 57. So we would watch you play on television. And then as soon as the season over, you right back in Murfreesboro, right? And I used to wonder if that was the same Robert J. to stay down the street from yeah. Yeah, yeah. Fighting yeah. Otis Taylor and yeah. uh, Don Manning. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just, you know, it's, it's once again, like I said, you know, uh, you, you, you have to know what potential that you've been blessed with. And uh, you, you don't... Uh, uh, you don't sell yourself short uh, when you step on the field of competition, but at the same time, you, you must rise to the occasion. But you do that uh, in humility, you know. And even on the field, uh, there's a sense of humility, but it's mixed with an, a super portion of aggression. And, and that's, I think, where your great athletes come from. Uh, you know, the, the, you know, some of the qu most quietest and calmest people, and that's what Jim Brown was. Jim Brown was a quiet, calm man, mm -hmm. but he had a, a deep rooted, a, 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 he had a deep rooted sense of balance within him. Sense of what? Balance. Balance. Uh, <laughs> I like the way you put when, that. When, 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 when it comes to having balance, you know what I'm saying? Right, right, but, right. You know, and that's, I think that's, that's the personality in the porch, uh, you could say, of great athletes, you know. Uh, they, 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 know, they know how to humble themselves because they know that uh, uh, the talents and the gifts that God has given them, you know, it, it's, 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 it's what it is. It's a gift. Uh, and because it's a gift, it's nothing so much special about them. It's just the fact that something that they have and they've been able to use, and it's a blessing to have it. But it's nothing to, you could say, strut uh, uh, and to, to flaunt and to, you know, to try to show off about. It's just something that you're blessed with. Uh, but at the same time, you know, um, that desire 
to win and to excel and that desire to uh, exceed beyond um, the average competition, you know, that's what separates, I think, great players, you know. And that's just something, that's an inborn instinct. If you don't have it, it's hard to go out and to get it. It's got to be something that's rooted and it's got to be something that's a part of your DNA structure, you know. Let me ask you something. Uh, Raymond Bonner told me that he heard from some people who also played in the uh, professional ranks that what separated you from most defensive backs was your ability to back. Well, he said that for 20 yards, you could run faster than most people could forward. Isn't there truth to that? I think uh, Bobby what really separated me from the, the average defensive back in the NFL is the fact that uh, I played uh, middle linebacker, I played nose guard, uh, I played offensive guard, I played in the line in college. So contact was second nature for me. Uh, and I ran track and I didn't realize I had exceptional speed until, because they didn't keep up with time back then, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? You run a 4 4 4 3 4 2 well, so what? You run a 4 4 4 2 4 3 you know, now they keep up with time and those times are exceptional times. So uh, it was quite unique because I was able to take on guys at the 240 and 250 because I was accustomed to doing that because that's why I played that in college in the line. But I also ran track and had sprinter speed so I could move to the corner and keep up with wide receivers. Mm -hmm. So the mixture of the physical nature that I was accustomed to playing in the line in college and the speed that I was able to acquire by running track, putting that together, that's probably what that's probably what kind of made a, a difference right there because uh, when I went to pro ball, I realized uh, cornerbacks are not real physical people. Right. They have more finesse and speed, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you get someone who's physical that can take on a pulling guard, that don't turn away from a fullback, and, and they bump and run, that can get his hands on a wide receiver, and you know, take his route away from him. Then that's prop. That was my biggest advantage right there. Is the fact that I was in a physical, you could say, combated environment uh, in football in the college level, more so than being in an environment where it required a lot of finesse and speed. So once I got there, you know, uh, it, it you know some things kind of stood out. And, and one of the reasons I think I made the Buffalo Bills team by not never playing corner before. I couldn't cover anybody in my first two days there, but when they said, it's time that we're gonna have some, uh, some contact. contact. Yeah. Well, I, I said to myself, I said, well, I, I can't cover anybody. One thing that I have always been able to do is <laughs> make some contact. So, uh, I like the way you humbly said that. <laughs> I mean, you have to, you know, yeah. you, you, this is something that you- No, but see, people that don't really know yeah. the game, yeah. When you say contact, what you mean is really just put some people, you know, yeah. in a hurtful situation. It's, 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 time, to put, it's time to put some put something on some people. Yeah. Uh, we had a guard called Joe Dong. I won't never forget him. And uh, Jack Kemp was the quarterback. And yeah. Joe Late Dong congressman. And yeah. uh, Minnie Max Allison was the tailback, and they did they they, they run a sweep in the round, and uh, and I came up full speed and hit Joe down in the backfield because he was pulling for Minnie Mac and just put him on his butt and tumbling and the coaches, you know what I mean, they just, they just stopped Stop practice. <laughs> they never they seen that before. Practice. And Joe Dong, I won't never forget, Joe jumped up and Joe gritted his teeth and he balled his fist. He got in Jack, Kemp, Jack Kemp's face and he told Jack Kemp, he said, run it again. He said, run it again. And he was screaming at Jack. And Said to myself, I said, I didn't know you were going to run it the first time, but I said, now you can't run it again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I don't know why I'm telling you so. Because it's, uh, true. it's true. It's and true. They ran it again. And uh, it, it, it wasn't just instant replay, but you know, I didn't even think about covering the receiver. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my focus was, I got a head start. <laughs> And those two plays right there after after practice. You made the team right there. 
vets come up to me. I, I mean, these are the veterans come up yeah, to me. Yeah. I didn't say anything to them because I didn't know anybody. Right, right. And the veterans came up to me and said, Robert, you just made the ball. <laughs> <laughs> but they weren't accustomed to cornerbacks attacking. Right, right. Uh, 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 Pulling guards. I mean, mm-hmm. you just don't take. No, nah, they don't. You'll see that. No, you won't see it again, it. more than likely. You don't. Yeah. But see, uh, and that right there bought me some time to learn how to the technical cover, part of playing the corner. Technical yeah. part of mm-hmm. covering, you know, because I couldn't cover anybody, you know, yeah. and I knew I couldn't cover anybody. You uh, bought the time, though. Well, yeah. you know, the contact yeah. is what bought me some time. And yeah. Buffalo kept me around uh, my first year. And uh, luckily, no one really got hurt and had to put me out there. Uh-huh. And then after my first, but you played special team because we used yes. to watch you come yeah. down and make plays, man. Team. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then after that, you know, I came home. I worked hard on my technique during the summer. We and saw you out there, man, yeah. every once, day, yeah, twice when I a got day. Back there, you know, I mean, I was I was ready to move into a starting position. And you got yeah. one that next year, right? Yeah. Yeah, but he worked out at high noon. Yeah. That's what he worked out. Mm. I remember when he worked out. And see the impact you had was generational because the cats that came behind you, including this brother sitting next to you, my best friend, uh, we saw you. He really remember that. I forgot what time it was, but I just remember you, you, you had that extra gene. That's the first time we'd ever seen that thing, man, you know. And uh, let me finish what I'm saying, man, if you don't mind, bro. <laughs> now, these are my people, y'all. Whoever see this, these are my folks, man. And this is very important and true. And that's the impact you had, Robert. Um... As you know, Pierre was always me and him same side, but but he he was inspired by knowing that a, a small guy could play a very violent game, man. And he brought your spirit on the field, and so did that brother Jerry Anderson. You know, because you raised that bar, man, and, and made it possible for a lot of people that came behind you to know that they, they could in fact compete, even though they might not be the biggest or the baddest. You know, yeah. It's you know it, it's 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 mental. That's all it is. You, know, you got to have some talent and some ability to go with that. Mm-hmm. You, know, you can be tough mentally, but it's just your, your mental mindset can't really do the job. It, it can get you in there, but it's, it's going to take some skills. Mm-hmm. Just like Pierre, you know, I mean, Pierre, he had some skill. I mean, he was a pitcher. You know. But I ain't talking about that moment when he played football. And he went, okay, well, I'm Because Pierre played football yeah. when. He was the smallest cat out there, man. Mm-hmm. But I wouldn't even play. I said, no, no, uh-uh. I'm dude, I was a sandlot retiree, you know, yeah. And Pierre took it to the high school level it's, it's, at that it's, side. It's about, it's about how bad you want it. We yeah. had a saying that we used to, uh, uh, we used to say, uh, we'll be out there training at, at, at 12 o'clock high noon mm-hmm. with vapors on the field. And, and, and this, the saying we would have it, it's for those who really want it, you know. If, if you want it bad enough, you'll go through some things in order to get better and to prepare yourself to be a competitor. Mm. Uh, if you don't want it bad and you're going to you know, take some shortcuts, you know, you won't make it. Won't yeah. Make it. Now, I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, I will forewarn y'all, uh, one of the, the places this will inevitably land is on a, it's, it's called a Pro Players Network. It's going to be a new cable sports network it's coming out uh, next October, not this October, but next October. Uh, it's going to land somewhere else before that, but I'm sure when this brother sees this footage, he's he going he gonna to carve out a space for this, you know, because I've had these kind of interviews. Some of the men are athletes, but they're men first. But this is the kind of footage I know the brother that, I, that I, I'm speaking of would treasure because I already got some stuff with Jim and a couple other great athletes in the can, you know. Uh, Lionel Hollins and Jalen Rose, folks like that. But I want to, you know, really take advantage of this and say, bro, uh, it's an honor to know you, to have grown up down the street from you, uh, been inspired by you, and know that Pierre, like you said, and it, and he played professional baseball because of what you just said. That was the ultimate use of the combination of his talent, his ambition, and his confidence, and what was the word you used? Mental toughness. Okay. And so that is a, a big part of that. and uh, But I'm not in awe of you guys because what I do well, I do well. You yeah. know. And, and that's what yeah. it's all about, uh, Bobby. You know what I mean? Uh, what, what gifts and talents God is giving you, that's where you have to excel at right there. You know, and uh, that's, 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 
that that's that's what you that's what you have to do. But one thing I would like to definitely make note of is the fact that uh, uh, all the success that uh, I've had in life, even before I played the game of football, and even while I was playing the game of football, and after I played the game of football, and even right now, you know, uh, God has been the major factor in my life. You know, there's just no question about it. You know, I, I know where my talent, my skills, I know who has. Uh, have sustained me, kept me, blessed me. Uh, I know who made, who gone before me and made things possible. Uh, I know who lifted me, even uh, brought me, you could say, to Buffalo and enabled me to perform there. You know, so he's, you know, he's structured and guided my life through it all. So you know, I humbly say that you know everything that I've done, it haven't been because of my skills, of my talents, of my ability, but it's been because of the plan that God has laid out for my life. You know, even before I was born, it was because of that plan, and He monitored that plan, and He guided my footsteps through that plan. So I, I give Him credit, you know, because uh, I'm only a vessel down here, you know, that uh, that's been placed here to, you know, to serve Him and to uh, bring glory to His name. So. He's the one that I give glory, and the one he's going to give praise. So uh, I, I can't, I can't sit here and have dialogue and conversation with you, and exclude uh, the ultimate, mm -hmm. ultimate uh, force behind the success that I've experienced. Man, and I ain't got no problem with it, and say amen to that. Uh, as we close this out, <clears throat> for those of you uh, who may doubt this statement. Uh, be your own judge if you can get the film. Uh, this is arguably one of the top three cornerbacks to ever play professional football. And if you put Deion Sanders in front of you, I'm going to say coverage, you might have a case. But all around corner, I ain't hearing that. Robert James was a better cornerback than Deion Sanders, which means he should be in the NFL Hall of Fame. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, one more thing for you. For you, Lee, just 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 look into the camera and say hi. Uh, just say hi. My name is Robert James, and real men don't play. Hi, my name is Robert James, and real men take things quite serious. No, it ain't quite serious. You just say what I just said. Now, hi, my that's name the title is, of my book. Hi, my name is Robert James, and real men don't play. That's all, man. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay.